My challenge today is to make a plate, ooh, excuse me, with this. Lou Roll Collagraph is what I'm going to call it. However, as Lou Roll is a very British wording, do feel free to substitute your own toilet paper term to whatever floats your bathroom boat. You do you. I'm just going to use a piece of cardboard as my base and then this with some PVA glue is all I'm going to use to try and create a collagraph design. Although I think one of the main draws of collagraph is the joy in finding lots of different materials and putting them together to have those textures collide with each other on the print. I do think it's a great challenge to put a limit on yourself and see just from one material how many different textures you can create. So whether I smoosh this, flatten it, twist it, crunch it, we'll see what we can do with this. So let's get into it. I've got this piece of card that I've cut from a packaging box. It just happens to be red on the inside, which is quite cool. That is going to be my base for my plate. And then I've drawn on this as a kind of guide for me to know where to put my textures. I'm going for the tag. I don't know why I said it in that voice. I don't usually go so far in colouring in a design that I'm going to be sticking stuff on top of. But because this one is a little bit more intricate in terms of it's got some areas which I want to be really dark and other areas which I want to have texture but not be so dark and bold as other areas. Yeah, I've done this just to kind of keep it clear in my head where I'm putting what textures because I know I'm just gonna get confused as I go along. <laughs> And if the light is going crazy, yep, it's just gone from dark to light already. Oh, I don't know what to do about that because the weather outside is interesting. <laughs> what can we do? So here we go. Here's our toilet roll. I'm just going to pull a few bits off. So let's think about this. I think the best place to start is the eyes and then we'll work our way out from there. PVA glue. You're an old craggy brush, you'll do. Now we've got some creepy eyes. Let's get a load of glue on here. Just kind of put some on, but then squidge it as we go. So I'm going to leave this bit as flat, not scrunched up, to kind of give it a slightly different feeling. I'm going to leave it with that these square patterns on because you never know that might be quite cool So after a lot of sticky, gluey, gooey fingers from all of that PVA glue and sticking down all of these tiny pieces of toilet paper that I scrunched up, ooh, I do enjoy that bit because it, it, it feels sort of pointless but at the same time cool. Anyway, this is what we ended up with and it's amazing how shallow it looks, doesn't it? Like it doesn't seem like there's that much uh, depth on the textures but 
it is amazing what the paper can and cannot reach. So we need to seal it now and I usually use button polish or something with shellac in but this time I'm going to try this Deco Art triple thick ceramic glaze. Yes I bought it for ceramics but I'm using it here to see what happens. Let's leave it to dry and we'll come back tomorrow. Okay, this is mulberry paper, which is really great because it's so thin, it can really mould around the different textures on the plate and pick up quite subtle textures. But it is better if we can dampen it down. So, sponge some water. I'm going to get one of these. Let's just peel you up and then that can rest on the towel and I'll just pop another one on top. That also means I can move it around a lot easier as well. You move over here. Okay, so over here, we're gonna ink up some stuff. This is dry now. It has only had one coat, which it would probably do better to have a few, to be fair. But filming days are a bit haphazard at the moment due to the weather. So I'm just gonna go with this. I'm thinking of using blue tones of ink and I'm thinking of perhaps having lighter in the center here apart from some of the features and then merging to a darker edges kind of scenario. SD block printing ink and let's put a little dollop. Right we've done a little blue poo there and now I'm gonna get the black just so that I can have a little black poo down this end. First of all I'm just gonna really mix up this blue because it's been sitting in the tube on its side for a little bit so it's the oil is separated out a little bit and we can simply make it lighter just by putting less on the center here so I'm not going to bother putting some white in with that. This is not the best scraper but it does the job somewhat. What we really want to be doing is kind of like scraping up, putting down and squishing the inks in together but that that is a bit darker we'll go with that and then we'll just add in another little bit. I'm going to start with some of the darker spaces so I'm just going to use some of that dark blue I made and then I'll come back in with some pure black I think in certain bits. Let's get the features, it's always good to get the features in your mind where they're going to be. <laughs> looking demonic. I also really just like scribbling this in. Oh it's so satisfying. So scrunchy and crunchy. Feels like you shouldn't be doing it, like you're ruining something. But it, it's not, you just it really sums up the creative process, isn't it? You have to make things look horrible before they look better. And if you can enjoy this bit of sort of destruction, then maybe the ending is even sweeter. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking about. It's got quite the, the blue booth going on. Okay, I'm going to put some of this light blue onto these flatter textures, I think, and start merging them in. So I'm trying to leave this just like a really faint. I'm just going to put a tiny light brushing on just so that it might pick up the odd little textures. <laughs> but on the sides, I'll be a bit darker because then hopefully it will kind of show that that's the nose bit and then you know do you know what do you know what I've said and whether it works I don't know funny things as well when you first stick everything down you want to be so careful with your plate and when I'm sort of sealing it I'm so careful with it and then when it gets to this part I start off really a bit sort of tentative and cautious just in case I knock anything off and then the more you realize that actually it's quite well stuck down and it's okay you just get really <laughs> with it and you just go a scribbling the difference between this and this texture is quite shallow 
so that's easier to when the paper goes on it'll kind of push into that crevice easily from this one because it's not having to go that deep down in whereas these ones are deeper and more different from say this height to this height um, there's more of a difference and because it goes straight up again to this height this valley here will be harder for the paper to reach so even though I'm plopping a little bit of ink in there you know on the off chance maybe we get a little bit of texture I'm not expecting these are actually all of the areas which I intend to stay white essentially but if we get a little tiny bit of prickly color speckling through I'm happy with that you know but I don't expect it because yeah it'll be hard to get the paper into those crevices I'm gonna go in with black now Ooh. Shall we give it a go? Ooh, this is the scary bit. There comes a point where there's no way to know. We'll give it a go. We'll give it a go. I'm going to start from the top, I think, and just gently say hello, face. Already, we can see little moments of this coming through this paper. This is another thing about this mulberry paper which is quite cool. You can really see which textures are coming and which you need to give a little bit of extra interest to. So I'm gonna move into the center and just holding the rest of this so that it doesn't move too much because we need to kind of tease, tease, encourage. <laughs> encourage our paper to bend into these deeper valley crevices but without blurring the rest and it's the same with these eyes here because it's real easy to tear your paper if you go too quick so if you can see the lump that I did the main ball of the eye is definitely coming through but I'm trying to just push around the sides of that just to pick up a little bit of that blue that I placed in the eye with it as we know Colograph at home for me it's it's just a it's a trial and error surprise making thing <laughs> like I never know what I'm gonna get and that's part of the joy and it encourages you to try and enjoy each part of the process for just simply what that part of the process was because I might have made this plate and it won't print that well maybe in which case was it a waste of my time to make it I don't think so because it was an enjoyable thing to do and very calming to sit there and find this face on on the on the plate and now the nosy hello nosy Oh, you're so cute. Okay, we're starting to get to the point where we have quite a lot of it starting to show through. And now is the time where I start wondering, hmm, is it enough? Now this eye looks a lot darker than this eye at the moment. So that could be that I haven't pressed as much on this eye. So I'm just gonna do that to see if I can even it out a little bit. But it could also be that the paper is drier in that particular side just don't know to me these eyes look quite creepy as i'm doing it so who knows what this is going to turn out like we may have a very creepy tiger on our hands so are we ready for the reveal <gasps> oh 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 hey now can you see i am loving this eye oh, that's a beaut isn't it I love the fact that that has got some lovely little white bits which really make it look like a proper eye. Now this one on this side has not been so successful, <laughs> I don't think. In my view, it looks a little bit like the pupil's gone down a little bit. Um, so I've obviously like inked 
a bit too much or as I was pressing the paper in trying to get the blue areas I think I might have like pulled the paper slightly so that it kind of smushed that down a little bit which is a shame but I don't know overall I think there's some really positive things about this and I really like the blue and the black working together I like the fact that I didn't go fully fully black on some of these areas and left them to merge into blue in some bits because I think that kind of makes it less heavy and we didn't I didn't get as much as I thought I would on these rays so that just looks like random texture as as you can see these bits but then I didn't ink them up very much because I didn't want them to be too raw I, I mean I'm I'm pretty happy like for a first inking I am pleased with that and considering this is all toilet roll <laughs> <laughs> this is all toilet roll and yet we have these marvellous kind of like bold texture sections we have some really delicate kind of crunchy textures going on in there but that are also soft and like the chin oh look at the chin down here I love how soft this looks it actually these bits these tiny little bits which go all the way around the edges do look so lovely and fluffy I just want to go hello under his chin. Tickle tickle, aren't you a lovely kitty? I know you should not do that with tigers. Okay, I might see how well the plate cleans with having that glaze on it. I don't know how well we're gonna clean it. So funnily, that was the eye that came out good. This one looks more mushy to me than that one, but it's possibly because there's more ink left on this one and there's less on that and you can actually see where that black ink has traveled down into the pupil. So that's why that eye looked smooshy. Right, let's see how much we can remove. This is just a little soft cloth and I'm just, it's just dampened with water. And actually, you know what? A lot of the white is coming back. Now you're not gonna get every bit of white on here. It's not gonna go back to perfect. Um, but as long as we can get off some of the main sort of dollops that we put on there Then if the rest of it dries on the plate Then it's it's not gonna at least mar some of the textures by sinking into them and taking them away So after I had cleaned it as much as I could I did go back in and ink up again I mixed some red ink in with the blue to create a kind of purpley tone and I decided to use some of that on the main part of the head on this one. I went a bit lighter inking the eyes this time and I went a bit darker doing those rays that come away from the tiger's head. Hmm, let's press it and see what happened. Ooh. Now this one has gone slightly more blurry on this area down here. I'm happier with the eyes this time. I don't know, the, there is a kind of purple tinge and I quite like how these bits have come out a bit more certain this time. This was the first one, this was the second one. I feel like, I definitely like it, like the, the deepness of the pupils on these, even though that was a messed up one, I feel like the darkness and how that's a, a really solid pupil is better than this one however this one is definitely a more successful eye in that it's more sort of fragmented like you can definitely see where the pupil ends where the irises begins that kind of thing i do enjoy how in putting a little bit of black just on the inside edge of the mouth there i don't know i think that really does do something <laughs> It's funny how tiny little things, you can look at a print and just kind of think, oh, I really enjoy that bit of texture. Oh, that's really juicy. And then there's other bits which are kind of like, well, yeah, yeah, that could have been better, I suppose. But there's always something good 
inside a print. No matter whether it comes out exactly as you expected, and to be honest, it's really hard to expect results in prints because they're always different. Like doing it at home, especially with things like Holograph at least, it's a bit easier with um, things like Lino Cut. But I don't know, I like these two. So thanks so much for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please do consider giving it a thumbs up and let me know whether you would ever try creating a colour graph with a toilet roll. Okay, I'm gonna go and clean up my plate, clean up my brushes. So keep making happy and I'll see you next time.